Many boulder retaining walls are in a state of failure because the contractor built the retaining wall the wrong way. In this video, we're going to talk about the fundamentals of building a boulder retaining wall and why these simple principles are used. Failure factors are the size of the boulders typically used and then how those boulders actually get laid into the bank. You know, what we're looking at is we've got a decent four foot boulder laid the right way. Another boulder that's kind of wonked in. In general, boulders make an absolutely phenomenal building material. They never suffer from weathering or erosion. Salt degradation has absolutely no impact on them. And the sheer weight of the boulders allows them to tolerate massive amounts of earth movement without ever transmitting that through the retaining wall and into a state of utter failure. That is when they're built the right way. So let's start talking about how boulder retaining walls are typically built the wrong way. You cannot build a retaining wall like that. And I'm going to look, point, go right down and point at this boulder right here specifically. So we got this nice four footer laid the right way. The depth is maximized into the slope. But beneath it, look at this thing. It ends right here. There's no depth. That boulder, if it was to be used where it is, it needs to be rotated and laid into the bank. This wall was built to maximize face, not depth. Now here's a pro tip. Contractors will usually buy boulders on a price per pound, but they will usually charge to install the boulders on a price per square foot. What this means is big boulders cost big bucks, but that doesn't always mean you get the most square footage out of those big boulders. That's where the big issue comes in. And that's a lot of big words. Now the first rule with boulders is bigger is better. With this in mind, contractors will usually try to install boulder retaining walls using stones of inadequate size for what they must retain. This means that the stones are simply too small. The strength of a boulder retaining wall and its overall holding capacity comes from the sheer weight of the boulders being used. Small stones simply can't hold back big banks. The second misapplication when building a boulder retaining wall is using a large boulder but using it in the wrong way. Boulders are by nature very irregular in their shape and size, meaning that they will have typically have a small side and have a big side. Here's another great example. These are phenomenal stones in and of themselves, like we were just talking about, Paul. I can reuse every single boulder here, but I'm not gonna be reusing it for its face. I'm gonna be reusing it for its depth. This boulder, Right there, rotate it 90 degrees. Get the depth into it, not the face surface area, but the depth. This boulder right now probably has six square feet face. By the time I'm done using it, we'll be lucky if we get two and a half, three, because it's not a very thick stone this way. It's gonna be deep into the bank, which is gonna resist movement. Oftentimes, contractors will try to put the big side on the face of the actual retaining wall. But the strength of the retaining wall lies in putting the big size into the bank. One boulder may have a face that is eight square feet and have a side that is four square feet. Now the contractor is going to try to optimize the square, the face square footage of that stone. So instead of putting the face square, instead of putting the big side into the bank and burying it, they're gonna flip that and they're gonna put that into the face. So we are at the site of a failing boulder retaining wall, probably 10 footer, and um, great boulders. They've used awesome stones, but the construction itself, how they put it together, is where this front wall has its main issues. You can see that they were optimizing the face of these boulders instead of giving it, instead of having a boulder like this, they use the big face area that should have been flipped sideways so it went into the hill because now there's nothing behind that push uh, holding it. And what, what's happening is here's a great example. Wide open. 
there's nothing back here pulling this one to that one and the soil behind it is pushing it out. Even boulder retaining walls need to be engineered when they're over four feet. Although typically you can build a gravity based retaining wall much taller with boulders than you can with a modular block. Boulder retaining walls also will need a certain amount of drainage and base material depending on the subsoil conditions. But if your soils are soft and compressionable, you're going to want to fortify that base by laying something down before you put the boulders in place. We're going to talk about filter fabric right now and we're going to dispel some of the mist. Boulder retaining walls in certain applications will require filter fabric and at other times you will not want to use filter fabric yada yada yada. If you have very sandy soils with very little clay binder behind it, it is mandatory that you put filter fabric in or the soils will wash through the face of the boulder retaining wall. But if you have a high clay content soil with a lot of silt within it, beware that when you put filter fabric behind that boulder retaining wall, that fabric is going to plug up. Plain and simple. And when that fabric plugs up, it's going to start to bulge outward. A way to get around it if you have a high clay content soil and you're willing to do some work is to plant the heck out of that retaining wall. It's almost like stitching the boulder retaining wall together. Those plants will stop the soil from weeping, from eroding through the face of that retaining wall and furthermore it will literally knit everything together actually creating a stronger retaining wall in the end than if you build a boulder retaining wall with just fabric alone. You obviously want to be cautious when applying filter fabric. It is not a universal one size fits all application. So let's repeat this. High clay content soil, you don't want to do anything with the wall. You put fabric behind it knowing that that fabric is going to bulge. Sandy gravelly soil, something that doesn't have a clay binder in it, you put filter fabric in because that filter fabric has to retain that sand from eroding through the face. But if you have a high clay content soil and you're willing to do some work on your own, don't put filter fabric in, but plant the heck out of the joint spacing. Eventually those joint spaces will grow over and will create a stronger, longer lasting retaining wall. Hands down. Hey, one last thing. Look me up on Instagram. The majority of my projects do not make it to YouTube. I do almost daily updates on my Instagram account.